So how do you find trending products to sell on Amazon in different categories? I'm gonna discuss that in this video. I'm gonna show you using a couple of different types of software, how you can actually check to see what the trend is in a particular niche compared to a few weeks ago and also previous years. So let's get started. So I'm here on amazon.co.uk. The two types of software I'm using are Helium 10 for this example and also Jungle Scout. I have discounted links to both below in the description. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to click subscribe, hit the bell icon, and that way you'll get notified about any new videos I release, including giveaways as well. So what we're gonna start with first is Jungle Scout. So what I'm using is Jungle Scout's web app, and you can do this. Again, the link is below in the description if you've not used Jungle Scout before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on UK. We'll use the UK as an example. And let's click on quite a big niche in general, which is generally safe for new sellers to sell in, and that is home and kitchen. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna select a few criteria first. We want to make sure we're browsing through sellers who have listings already that are FBA, because we're looking generally to sell private label FBA. We want the minimum revenue to be generally at least kind of 2,000 pounds and upwards, but I never like to use round figures in the filter, so let's say 19, 20 or something like that. Minimum price, I generally would want somebody to be selling for nine pounds and above. We don't wanna go below that because the Amazon FBA fees really cut into our profit margin. So let's go with nine pounds. Now, in terms of other filters, the only other one is minimum reviews because what I'm looking for here is a product that's newly trending in the niche. So it has low reviews, but it's already doing good revenue figures. That gives us a little clue as to whether this could be a trending niche. So let's say something like nine reviews, uh, sorry, um, in terms of minimum reviews, we're not really fussed. It's actually the maximum reviews because we want it to be kind of a newish product. So let's say maximum number of reviews, let's put something like 14, no more than that. And let's see what this actually comes up with. So what we're asking the software to do for us is to find a product in home and kitchen that is selling for nine pounds or above and does revenue already of 19, 20 or above. Again, these are average figures and has no more than 14 reviews. So let's click on search. So we've got our results now. You can see we've got a lot of results, 1,624 results in total. Many of these products will not be suitable for Amazon private label. Immediately, when you look at this, if you see anything related to Christmas, ignore it because obviously these are gonna be overinflated figures in terms of revenue, in terms of kind of search volume, because of the time of year. We're in the run up to Christmas now, of course. So ignore all of those. Now let's use one as an example. Even here, you can actually sort by monthly revenue, you can sort by review count, etc. But it's not really that necessary because remember, we're just trying to get an idea. We're looking for product ideas at the moment. And if you're struggling for a product idea, this is the type of software you need to be using. Let's look at this one. So this is blackout blinds for any window. So let's view that on Amazon. So you can see this product doesn't have very good uh, reviews uh, and it's still making good sales and it's uh, a good kind of price point there. So what I wanna do is if I'm looking at this niche in general, what I might do here is click on blackout and then see what the auto suggests are from Amazon. So blackout blind and just leave it at that and see what comes up. So this is probably one of the main keywords for this particular category. Now, what I can do then is, I prefer Helium 10 when it comes to assessing keyword search volume. You can use both types of software for everything really, so you only really need one, but I have both because I find it necessary when it comes to product research, but in particular Helium 10 when it comes to optimizing my Amazon listing and looking at search volume in a niche. So let's try that right now. So what I'm gonna do is use the X-ray uh, tool here. So what I want to know is, we've got the revenue figures there, which are healthy in this niche, so nothing wrong with that. But let's have a look at search volume. If you click here on the graph, and then click on all time, what I can see is some interesting peaks and troughs in terms of search volume. Now, if we look at this a little bit closer, so this is a general search for blackout blind, you can see the peak there was in June 2020. So now we have to think about this. Why is that? This is a blackout blind. Why are there peaks? in the middle, kind of the first or second week of June. It's because at that time of year, my guess, which is probably right, is that is the time when the days are the longest. So that's when people need blackout blinds. Here right now, if you're living in the UK like I am, and you know it's the run up to Christmas, it's dark all of the time and gloomy. You do not need blackout blinds. This is actually a low time of the year to be picking up something like that. So this makes complete sense. Now, what we could do if we go for another kind of related search, so let me see if I combine a related search here. 
So blackout blinds for bedroom seems to be a good search. You can do the same thing again. You can do the same uh, using the x-ray tool. Have a look, look at the search volume again, just to kind of confirm your suspicions about a niche. It's good to have a few examples to confirm your hypothesis here. So let's have a look again. Click on all time. And again, you're seeing the same kind of peaks and troughs. So that's a good sign. So we know what's going on there. But the problem with this product then is we know that there's a seasonal element to this product. This could be a trending product. And overall, the search volume is probably up over the past couple of years. But again, we'll look at another example in just a minute. But if this is selling so well, when the days are the shortest, I think yesterday, I think it's 21st of December or something like that, is the shortest day of the year. So it's just passed. So if it's on the shortest day of the year, these are selling very well, then it's a good sign that you'll do all right with a product like this. I'm not saying you, you should go ahead and launch it. Many, many other things we need to check, including profit margins, including uh, any restricted restrictions to sell this particular type of product, etc. But potentially it's one to look into further. Now, how do we find actual newly trending products in a particular niche? Let's have a look at that right now. So I'm going to go back here to Jungle Scout where we initially found the product. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on reviews uh, kind of lowest to highest. And you can see here a lot of the products, they have only one review or two reviews already doing a good amount of revenue. And what you need to do here is quickly kind of scan through and see, is there anything new that you've not heard of before? I mean, a lot of you have obviously home and kitchen items. So you'll be able to tell quickly. For example, duvet cover, that's nothing new to market. But what is this steam cleaner, handheld steam cleaner? Again, nothing that new, but potentially it's something we can look into. And then we've got here double face satin ribbon. Again, anything seasonal related to Christmas, related to packaging, completely ignore. Executive chair, too big to kind of launch and sell on Amazon, especially if you're a new seller. Pillowcases, we completely ignore. And that's what we want to do. We want to scan through. So I'm going to have a quick a look through now and see if there's anything interesting that catches my eye. So I've picked up, uh, I picked out a couple of random ones. So let's have a look at them right now. One of them was this. This is a uh, flowers apron. You know, obviously aprons and stuff is nothing newly trending, is nothing seasonal as such. But again, I just want to have a look at the search volume in this particular niche. So I'm just going to type into the search bar here, kitchen aprons, because that seems to be one of the best kind of uh, keywords for this particular niche. And I'm just going to have a quick look at the search volume. Click on all time again. And you'll see the search volume reasonably stable. Obviously, there's periods where you get a little bit of a, a, a short peak. Sometimes that's around Christmas, for example, when people are giving this as gifts, but generally quite stable in the niche. If you look over the past couple of years, possibly a slight trend upwards, not, not particularly, but possibly a slight trend upwards. So I'd want to look closer in this niche. Just see if there's any sub niches here, any new styles people are using or any new kind of fabrics people are using in aprons. So the supply and demand dynamics are in my favor. So if, if I see four or five listings that are a newer kind of style, all doing really well, two, three, four thousand in revenue, but they've only just launched recently. That's what I'm looking for in this niche. Now, let's have a look at another one that I just opened up. Another one was this. Um, I found one on Jungle Scout there, which is a clip on fan. I've not really heard of these before, but I imagine they're just kind of smaller ones. Uh, you clip to the side of wires or your desk or something like that. Now this, we already know what to expect. It's probably going to be very, very seasonal. And if we ha actually have a look at the, um, yeah, you can see it here on the search volume history, massive spikes on probably very hot heat wave type days or weeks. And then the, um, the uh, search volume is a lot lower. Nothing wrong with that. It's just something to be aware of. As long as the baseline is giving enough revenue, that's what you're looking for. But I mean, obviously it's very cold right now, but when I look through this revenue list, I'm seeing a lot of highly ranked listings that are doing five, 600 in revenue. So I wouldn't go near this. There just ha there has to be enough demand in a niche. Another one I opened up, which is interesting. This is doing 2000 and above in revenue, 33 uh, ratings. Uh, it does have different variants. So you have to be a little bit careful because this is a total of all of the variants. But let's have a quick look at the niche anyway. It looks like it's a vintage clock. So vintage wall clock comes up there, number three. And again, let's just have a look at the search volume. Just see, is this a newly kind of trending product that people like in their homes? Click again on the search graph and click on all time. And not particularly, uh, again, there are some periods where it, it looked like it was very popular kind of earlier this year, but still, holding reasonably well in terms of a trend. But what I'm really looking for is potentially something where the graph is up and down like this, but it's kind of trending upwards and it's newly trending upwards. So it's kind of sideways for a while. And then last two, three months kind of trending upwards. 
So I'm going to have another look to see if there's any other products that we could identify. This is really good. If you find something like this, what that means is there's a lot new products coming to the market, but because the search volume is increasing as well at the same time, it kind of makes up for that extra supply in the niche. So you, your, your chances of doing very well in this niche are high because more and more people are searching for these products with the limited supply there is. As I'm scrolling down, another one I see here is Octopus Plush Soft Toy. So let's have a look at that very quickly. Massive amount of revenue and not many reviews. 14,000 revenue, only two reviews. So let's have a look at that um, in terms of a niche. Now, this could be in the wrong niche, really. I mean, it's more of a toy, but you can still, you sometimes get a lot of overlap with niches as well. But regardless, we're just looking for product ideas here, regardless of category, just anything that's potentially safe for us to sell. So let's have a look at that. So I've typed in here Octopus Soft Toy, which seems to be one of the main kind of keywords. And let's again, look at the uh, kind of search uh, volume history. And this is very interesting because especially here from around the beginning of, uh, 2020, all the way up until July, if you got in anywhere with this product, it was a massively trending niche. And then it kind of exploded towards the end of uh, last year in terms of popularity. And then it seems to have died off. But just because you see in a peak and a trough doesn't mean the search volume is not good enough now. You can still look at this niche. Obviously that listing is doing particularly well, but that's what I mean by a trend. And you had seven, eight, nine months to get into this trend, and then you would have done massively well. I'm sure some sellers sold hundreds of thousands of units of this type of product. Many things you wanna check. And this is not a kind of full appraisal video, but if you do wanna work with us, you can apply to work with us on the link below. You can have a chat with me, and we'll see if uh, our training program is kind of what you need right now, but regardless of whether you're a beginner or you're an existing Amazon seller and you're struggling at the moment. We can have a chat about that. But in terms of whether you would sell in this niche, I mean, I'm not gonna go completely into the uh, other types of appraisal you need to do, but there's a lot more work you would need to do, especially at these price points, these sub 10 pound price points. You need to make sure, for example, there isn't a massive brand already selling this type of product and they've copyrighted or patented or something like that. You need to check all of these things. Just because there are listings, especially Chinese sellers selling this type of product, doesn't mean it's safe to sell. Amazon take down listings all of the time. And sometimes it's a little bit after the fact as well. So you'll need to look into that. And also just generally look at the first page in terms of revenue figures and sales figures. Remember, this is a toy, it's Christmas time. So you kind of have to ignore the revenue figures right now. You're more interested in how's the revenue mid January or even a few weeks ago. And there are ways you can actually check that as well by looking at the sales ranking and the sales graph of some of these listings. For example, let's look at one of the ones when I'm looking at the how well a particular listing is doing in a niche and how well the niche is, I want to look at one of the listings that has the most amount of data. So usually I would go and look at some of the ones with the highest revenue figures, especially if they've been selling for a long time. So for example, this uh, Octopus Soft Toy, which does 55,000 in revenue, let's scroll to the right, and we can see it was launched in 2015. So a massive amount of data. So let's have a look and see how their sales have been. And you can see there the trend quite clearly. Remember, this is the exact same listing. And unfortunately with Helium 10 on some of these, it doesn't go back that far. So we've only got since kind of the beginning of 2020, but that's still good, still a couple of years. And you can see clearly the trend overall is upwards. You can see the average trend line there. So it's marked off quite clearly. So the trend is upwards, which is good. And you're getting a, a kind of spikes as well over the past couple of months, which is again a good sign. This is not a sign of a dying niche, which would be kind of the other way around. So it's generally a niche that is still continuing to grow, although you have to be careful about the figures right now. Even in this niche of octopus <laughs> soft toys, there are sub niches and that's what you need to kind of look for. So. As an example, there's a few ways I teach my students how to do this, but as an example, you can list by revenue, scroll to the right, and what you wanna do is look for those that are doing really good revenue, but hardly any reviews. So you can see hundreds of reviews and then suddenly five. So that's one I definitely want to look at. So open that in a new tab. Scroll down again and another one with just two reviews. That's another one I wanna look at, because I wanna see, well, these two new sellers in the octopus plush toy niche, what are they doing that's different? because that could give you a clue as to what's trending. So could it be just color? Could it be material? Could it be style? Could it be that the price point is just really good? You need to find out what the reason is. You need to write down why are they doing well? 
Because if you understand why they're doing well, then you understand product research and you know what you're doing when it comes to customizing your own private label product and launching the product. Another one here, what are they doing that's different? Is it the fact that it's reversible? I mean, I'm just looking at it and this split second kind of analysis I'm doing here, but what is it? Or is it the size that's really good? Is it the larger size? Is it the fact that it's machine washable? Is it the safety standards on it? Or are they just running really good promotions on it? Like, why is this doing really well? And remember, although the revenue figures for these couple of listings are high, eight, 9,000, and it is obviously the run up to Christmas, and that will drop down, their baseline is still gonna be probably three or 4,000. And you can, again, check this using the data. So I hope that helps you. So this is, just gives you a flavor of what product research is all about. It's a lot of manual work and labor, but it is fun to do, and you wanna take your time doing it. You want to try and learn why certain products are doing better than other products, especially if they have less reviews and they were launched recently. Yeah, it's possible some sellers will put a lot of money behind PPC and stuff like that, there's no doubt. However, they then can't control their sales ranking. They can't control the reviews they are getting. The market is dictating that. That's what you need to use, that, those kind of data points to learn and inform you of what product you should go after. And you wanna try and get a, a list of three to five products. That Those are your best ones that you've researched and then make final decisions. Get prices on all of them, including shipping, and then make a decision and only go after one. If you're a beginner, start with one product only. I advise all my students to do that. Don't do any more than one product. Learn a full product cycle first. Don't rush in and launch five or six products because it won't go well for you. You need to learn the entire process first Make a few mistakes along the way, which is completely normal, and then do it again. Now, if you wanna minimize your mistakes, always try and seek support, find a mentor. It doesn't have to be me, it could be anybody, anybody who's experienced in selling on Amazon. They've already made the mistakes and kind of learn from them because it will speed up your learning curve, avoid mistakes, and most of the time save you money in the process as well. Thanks very much for listening.